live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Micron Insight 2019. Brought to you by Micron. Hi everybody, welcome to Pier 27 in San Francisco. My name is Dave Vellante and I'm with my co-host David Floyer and you're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. And this is our coverage of Micron Insight 2019 hashtag Micron Insight. David, I love this show because, well, of course we're going to talk about Micron and memories and DRAMs and NANs and all that you know, techie stuff. We're also going to sort of set the tone on this day. It's a really thought leadership day and we talk a lot about AI and edge and the big mega trends and superpowers, the cloud, mobile, that are really affecting demand and it all starts with data. So Micron is a company that we're going to talk about and talk about in detail, but what are you seeing, David, as the big trends that are driving demand for bits? For bits? Well, let's start with the edge that you were talking about. The, the edge is uh, growing and it's going to grow very, very strongly indeed. It's going to grow with smaller processes. It's the ARM processors at the edge, doing inference processing, capturing the data and wanting the, to do that capturing of the data and the processing of that data as close to the origin of that data as possible. So memory and uh, all of the, uh, the, the NAND is moving out to the edge itself. And it's going to be smaller, lots of smaller processes as opposed to the lots of big processes. So here's your question. So, and, and we've been following these markets for many, many years. And of course, it, when we started in the business, it was all mainframe, and that was really what drove the consumption of data. And then, and then the PC uh, changed that. Yep. And, and then that, you used to count markets. We used to do that all the time. And there was yep. much more data going you know, to, the, to, the, to the laptops and, and desktops. The internet began to, to change that, and of course cloud sort of re-centralized yes. a lot of the spending yeah. and a lot of the buying power. Do you see, is it a pendulum swing again? Is it, is it that dramatic, or, or is it, do you see it as different? It, it's, it's the, like all big trends, the center still remains. So the center now is cloud, still mainframes as part of that cloud. That has to remain. And that is just much more economical for large scale processing. That's the most economical. However, the, also the economics of it is that moving data is very expensive. It's very expensive in terms of the effort. And it also, when you move data, you lose context. So if you want the best context, and if you want to do things in real time, you want to process that data in real time as close to where it was produced as possible. So yes, that there will be a very big swing on, in the amount of processing and the amount of important processing that happens at the edge. So, from the standpoint of things like NAND and Flash, uh, Steve Jobs changed everything when yep. they decided to put Flash inside of the, the iPhone. Uh, uh, and, and the, the iPhone, iPod, iPod, actually. IPod, yes, and that drove yes, you know, massive, massive, that was the beginning yeah. of this, the dam breaking. And, and what happened is that volumes went to the roof, costs went down, and that's really when you first predicted way back in the early sort of part of this decade that, that, that NAND and flash would affect spinning disk, and it, it clearly has. Pricing maybe hasn't come down as fast as we thought because of supply constraints. Um, but, but nonetheless, it, it's happening, and now the prices are coming down more. You've seen a, 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 a somewhat of an oversupply in NAND. Uh, prices have come, come down pretty substantially. And there's elasticity. I mean, ever since we've been following this market, you've seen when prices drop, people buy more. You know, at the same time, you saw like Pure Storage last quarter said, well, the prices dropped faster than we thought and actually hurt, hurt our revenue yes. uh, because it just yeah. happened so fast in the middle of the quarter yeah. that it hurt pricing overall for the subsystems. But nonetheless, that's the trend that we see happening. It feels like there's a new wave or a new step function of consumption going on with regard to Flash. What are you seeing? Yes, um, Flash was always about performance before. Um, and there were two constraints to Flash uh, in terms of its impact on the, the whole industry. The first was that the protocols that we used in Flash were the old fashioned protocols that we used for HDD. Now those have improved enormously with NVN NVMe, et cetera, and those have got much, much better. So that increases the demand for that Flash. The usefulness of Flash is now much better. And the second is, in terms of, that, that's high performance. There's high capacity flash. 
And now uh, Flash is growing in two dimensions. It's growing in the number of layers, but it's growing from SLC to MLC to TLC to QLC in terms of the, the number of bits that it can pack into it. So those all have cost implications on the, the cost per bit, obviously. Sure, right? yeah. so the more, uh, both of those are reducing the cost per bit. Uh, and, and making it available for different markets. So the capacity market now, as the prices come down, mean that it's going to take a bigger and bigger uh, uh, bite into the HDDs. And it's in, in data center, it's going to become the norm just now, to have flash. Now, Micron's a little bit late to NVMe, but they're now hopping on board. Yeah. Actually, you've made the comment to me in previous discussions that they've actually timed things pretty well. Yeah. You kind of didn't want to over-rotate to NVMe. I mean, I know Pure was first, but Pure's a relatively small part of the marketplace. Yeah. It seems like now everybody's going to NVMe, yes. and, and, what, and basically what this does is that you, you pointed out, it eliminates a lot of the you know, sort of overhead. older, yeah. slow, overhead, yeah. chatty protocols, yeah. and now, it's like a bat phone right to yeah, the, to the data. Yeah. So um, what are you seeing in terms of NVMe adoption? Is it now mainstream? Yes, uh, we're predicting that in 2019, 50% of the drives will be NVMe drives. That's a very rapid So let's up, le let's up level a little bit. We're, we're talking about all this geeky stuff down here, but, but my, what I'm interested in is why we need this. It's and, and obviously, the obvious question is there's so much more data now, but it's also AI. We talk a lot about the new innovation innovation sandwich of being data plus AI plus cloud, combine those things together, and that's really what's driving innovation. How real is AI? Do we, we, I presume we need all this stuff to be able to support these data-driven workloads, but how real is AI? I mean, it feels like it's pretty substantive. I mean, we've got a lot of these shows, you hear about digital transformation and all these buzzwords and the edge and IoT. Of course, AI is one of the big buzzwords, but it does really actually feel like a superpower to invoke one of Pat Gelson's yeah, words. Yeah, it, it is. And, and AI could only operate if there was all that data available. So it's the availability of that data, because the, the, the algorithms in AI go back a long way. There's, no, there's nothing new in that. Um, right. But AI has now the availability of processing that data, a large amount of data, which makes it much more powerful. And now you're getting AI and things like a, a, a cell phone, the amount of AI that goes into recognizing your face is enormous. And it's now practical, everyday things are being done in AI, and it's going from being a niche to being just everyday use. And its impact long term is, is profound. I mean, it, it'll do all the jobs that humans do, many of the jobs that humans do much more efficiently. Driving a car, it'll be better at driving a car than human beings. Are. Yeah, I mean, you know, you see AI everywhere. You're right. I mean, ad serving still stinks, yeah. uh, but it's getting better. Yeah. Fraud detection's getting much, much, much better. Uh, email is now finishing my sentences for me. Uh, you've noticed that in the last you know, last yep. year or so. It basically says, oh, I like that choice. Boom, I'll take it. And yep. and so. You know, as much as we hate autocorrect, um, <laughs> and, and so those are, those are some small well, examples. But yeah. what, what the industry likes to talk about is how it's changing lives, what it's going to do for healthcare, uh, uh, autonomous vehicles. So those are some of the big picture really items, big which yeah. really haven't kicked in yet, just in terms of, or have they, in terms of consuming. Uh, demand for things like uh, DRAM no, and it's, NAND. It, it's relatively small at the moment, but it has the potential to be to be very large. Obviously, let's uh, go ahead. Go finish on. your thought. Uh, it, because uh, in the next ten years, we're going to see automated cars. It's going to be in pieces. You're going to have the the trucks going first, uh, and then other th other cars later. So. And I know you're, you're fairly sanguine and, and optimistic about autonomous vehicles. I know there are a lot of skeptics out there that talk yeah. about, you know, we don't have enough data and, and we'll see, but um, we'll talk more about that. But I want to talk about Micron a little bit. Micron's a company, they, they, last year they were a $30 billion company, they had $23 billion in revenue this year, so dramatic drop in revenues. Uh, and, and, and that was really due to the, the, the change in the supply demand dynamic. Now historically, when these things happen, the stocks of these, these companies these would just, you, you could yeah. predict it. You say, okay, time to sell, because here comes the oversupply, and then when you, know, you hit the bottom, time to buy. Micron's done an amazing job of sort of steadying that, you know, managing its, its uh, demand and supply you know, balance. 
Also, I mean, obviously doing share buybacks have helped the stock price, but the stock price has held up pretty well. So Micron's a, now a $23 billion company. Last year they threw off $17 billion in free cash flow. This year, $13 billion. But still, well over 50% of their revenue is going back to free cash flow, which is quite large. Mm. Their market cap's 51 billion, so they're, they're, they're trading at a 2.2x revenue multiple, multiple, which is very strong. And they got a 30% gross margin. Right, I mean the PC business, you know, you think, <laughs> think about that. I mean, so yeah. the, the, the DRAM business is a good business, right? Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a nice business because they don't have a, you know, a giant sale, you know, direct sales force, so they don't have that cost. It's all OEM. through you know, yeah. OEM, so it's a fairly e efficient business, uh, and they've managed it pretty well. Your thoughts on Micron yes, as a company? Yes, they, they have. They have uh, they've managed the timing of every new release very well indeed. Uh, if you go too early, you over-rotate, uh, then you are struggling to get that out, the costs are higher, uh, and the people who are selling the previous generation are going to do better. Uh, but they've always timed it perfectly. Uh, yeah, um, now they face some, some challenges. I mean, we talked about the supply-demand imbalance, uh, but they're managing that. China, you know, the tariffs hurt them. Huawei was a big customer, they can't sell to Huawei anymore. China coming after uh, companies like uh, 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 Micron really going after consumer flash, building fab with, capacity, yes, and yes. then to begin with, and then yeah. eventually China's going to you know, aim at the higher value sort of enterprise. What are right. you seeing there? I, I agree with you. Um, they've had to rotate because of this problem with, oh, uh, with uh, uh, the, 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 the tariffs that have been put on, on China. So what's the reaction? They're going to have to invest. And that long term is good news for consumers and good news for everybody else, but it's going to be bad news for uh, uh, other people in the business. So a bunch of announcements today, we can't talk about it because they're not public yet, but you're going to see some you know, SSD stuff coming out, maybe some acquisitions announced, you might see some other uh, 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 things around 3D Crosspoint, which is something that we really haven't talked much about, but we will, I know your, your thoughts on that, or is it it's still kind of niche, you remember the HP Memrister, right, uh, which is, never, nobody talks about that anymore. <laughs> um, but, but now Micron's in a different situation. They'll, they'll figure out, okay, where that fits, but it's still a niche in your view because it doesn't have the volume. But we're going to be talking about that stuff, but again, up-leveling the conversation to some of those big mega trends, those superpower drivers, data, AI, IOT, uh, and the edge, and some of the things that are really driving change in not only industry, but also our lives. So David, uh, appreciate the, the, the insight. Uh, David and I will be here all day today, so you're watching theCUBE from Micron Insight from San Francisco. We'll be back with our next guest right after this short break. <laughs>